What is happening, fish and friends? Welcome to another episode. Today we're talking about three letters. S L X. So in this video, we will cover all of the features on the reel, the numbers, all that fun stuff. And luckily I've had the pleasure of using this reel for the past couple months. So I will tell you what I really liked about the reel and what could be some potential areas for improvement. So what do you say? Let's, uh, let's take a closer look. And talk about the features. Now, the first thing that I noticed about this reel was the size. The palmability of this reel is awesome. It feels great in the hand, good, nice, soft, smooth edges. Now, on Shimano's description, it says that this reel is 20% smaller than the Canaan. I've never used or owned or even held a Canaan. However, I do have the old loose speed spool. This is an old reel of mine. I don't know, probably four or five years old. Check out these two side by side. Look at that. The SLX is just a hair, you can see, just a hair shorter than the Lou's speed spool. And that's pretty crazy because the speed spool, I feel like, is kind of a standard for people at the $100 price point. You know, Lou's kind of took over that for quite a long time at $100. And, you know, now you see a lot more options like the Revo X, this. But for a long time, man, it was, you want a good $100 reel, you go with the Lou's speed spool. And you can see these two compared this way. Now, the SLX looks like it might be just maybe a tad bit longer. Not by much, though. I mean, these are both very small, very palmable, good, comfortable reels. So that kind of gives you a comparison for the size of this reel, the palmability, what it looks like. Now, speaking about that $100 price point, that's where this SLX comes in at. It's $99, so just under that $100 MSRP. And that really does seem to be the sweet spot for people. You know, if you're a college angler or a high school angler, and you need to get a few of these on the deck of your boat. You know, $99 is pretty darn respectable. Or if you're just a budget angler or like me, you got kids and a family, sometimes you just can't go out and spend two, $300 on a reel as much as you'd like to. Sometimes it just doesn't fit in the budget. So something around that $100 price point is a good affordable option. Now, another part of why this reel feels so good in the hand is the weight. This this reel comes in at 6.9 ounces, and that's due to the aluminum frame and graphite side plates. Shimano calls this their Hagane body, which really just seems to be a cold forged aluminum. They say it makes it stronger. I don't know how much stronger you can get than a, you know, a standard aluminum body, but whatever else they can pack into this reel, and even if it is just a little bit better, I will take whatever they can put into $99 for me. Now, when you flip this baby over and start turning the handle, it's a very smooth retrieve. And I was surprised. It feels extremely good. This is only a three plus one bearing system, but they put those bearings and they feel like really good bearings in the critical spots. I tell you what, it feels extremely good and smooth. I was surprised. Now, I have heard people say that even the Shimano Corrado K feels smoother than this, which is crazy because to me, this reel feels really nice, especially at 99 bucks. Now, depending on which model you get, there are six total models, three left-handed and three right-handed, and they come in 6'3", 7'2", and 8 2 to 1 speeds in left and right-handed, and they come equipped with 11 or 12 pound drag, depending on which model you get. The spool on this will hold 110 yards of 12 pound monofilament, and I have the uh, 7.2 retrieve. This model brings in about 28 inches per turn of the handle. Speaking of the handle, this does have a 90 millimeter handle. As you can see, again, compared to the old speed spool, and I don't know if the new ones, if they've changed these or anything. Like I said, this is, I don't know, four or five years old, one of the earlier ones. But you can see there the difference in handle size compared to just a regular speed spool. So it is a little bit bigger and feels good and comfortable. I like it. Part of the reason that feels so good is because of these knobs. Now, as I understand, these are the same knobs that are again on the Shimano Corrado K, uh, which is about $75 more expensive than this one. So that's pretty awesome. They have kind of an X like shape when you put your, they call these handles the power grip R handles. I'm not sure what that means, but it's a good rubbery texture to it. I like it. It's not real slippery. It is pretty grippy and they have kind of these little curvatures at the edge. So if you notice when you put your fingers together to reel, it actually feels really good there. It contours to them. I like that. I definitely dig the handles. As you move down from the handle, the drag star does click. The spool tension knob does not click, but it is pretty tight and smooth to move. I like that. I don't really care if they click or not. As long as they're tight, I know that I'm not going to bump it and move it. You're not going to do that with this. It's a good hard yet smooth turn. So I like that. This does have a brass main gear and a brass main shaft, which I was kind of surprised. You know, a lot of the models, they'll cut that and go with uh, aluminum. I don't know how much of a difference it makes in longevity. Some people swear by brass gearing, but um, they do have that in here. So if you're wondering about that, it is a brass main gear. Now, when you flip this over to open it up, opening up the side plate is very easy. You can see there it's got the closed or open. Click that over to open and it does pop open. It's got that gold wing side plate. 
and you can see inside that shows you the brakes. This is what Shimano calls their VBS or variable brake system and it's really just a six pin centrifugal braking system. So these are really easy to use as you can see here when they're clipped up like that, not moving, those are locked in place. Now when you pop them out, so you can see here as this pops out, that means they're on. So right now I currently have three on and three off and I've kind of switched between two and three depending on the weight of the bait. So they're pretty easy to use. You just click it up or click it down, depending on if you want to turn it on or off. I've tested a number of different lures on it. Uh, pretty much I've only used it for cast and retrieve baits so far. And whether it's a heavier swim jig or a smaller jerk bait like I was using the other day, all of them have worked pretty darn well on this reel. I've been very, very happy with casting and casting distance. Now to close it up, not too hard at all. You just keep this push down. And because it is spring loaded, you want to keep that push down. Move from open to closed and you're done. That's all there is to it. Now I was also surprised by the brakes on this. The centrifugal brakes on some reels are a little bit louder. These are very quiet. It's just got a really slight hum to it. Um, not really noticeable at all, so I like that. And they have a good positive grip to them. Some of the reels out there, even with the centrifugal brakes, sometimes they almost feel a little bit underpowered. These feel really good. So that along with your spool tension knob will get you adjusted perfectly fine. Oh, speaking of the thumb bar, yeah, it's got a good positive click on it. So as you see, it's got a good load to it. There's almost a spot where you can kind of stage it, but not really. It's a good buttery positive click. I definitely like the thumb bar on it as well. So those are the features in a nutshell. Now I've had the uh, opportunity to use this. I've caught some big fish on it. Any more fish? Any big fish? That's all I want. Oh, thank goodness I come up out of that rock. There's a fish. Oh my goodness, that's a good fish. That is a really good fish. That is a really good fish. Oh my gosh. Please do not come unglued. That is such a PB. Oh my gosh. Look at that thing. There's some things I really like about it and some things that might be areas for improvement. So my pros, the first thing, like I said, is it's a small, palmable, light, easy reel to fish all day. Handle feels good. The palming feels good. It's a good small little frame here. There's no sharp edges or anything right here. Nothing. Now this for me has been a problem. When I cast, I go two fingers in front of the rod trigger, hold it here and cast. Some reels, take a look for example at the loose. The loose is still very comfortable. I've never had an issue with them casting or anything. That screw is recessed underneath the graphite side plate. So if you look at that, there's no screw sticking up out of there. Compare that to the SLX and they've completely taken that screw away. Now, as long as they do this, as long as they recess it down there and these are nice, smooth little edges, I don't have a problem. I have used some reels where that screw is not recessed, it sticks out and it tears up my hand here. So I don't have any problems with this. Everything is smooth, very comfortable in the hand. I like that. Along with being comfortable, like I said, the smoothness, this is a very good, solid feeling little reel. There have actually been a couple times I was using this when I was reeling in fish that I had to stop and make sure my drag was set because if you have your drag set real low like this and you reel in, you'll notice I'm reeling, my spool's not moving, but that line guide's moving back and forth. I actually had to stop a couple times and check that because I thought, oh my gosh, my drag's not up. My drag was cinched down tight. It just feels smooth. Even when you're bringing in a fish, it feels very smooth in a sturdy little tiny frame. And finally, of course, that $100 price point. To me, I personally can't afford to go out and buy $300 reels for every one of my combos. So the $100 price point for me is pretty sweet. I've got quite a few reels at this price point. So let me know in the comments below, do you want to start seeing some comparisons with this reel, with other $99 reels? What do you want to see? I'm thinking of almost like a tournament. $99 reel showdown. Let me know in the comments below if you would like to see something like that in the future. And if you want to see that, what kind of reels do you want to see? Let me know in the comments below. I care what you all have to say. When I get to the things that could use improvement, I haven't had any issues with it, but number one is the drag, only 11 or 12 pound drag. Now this lose has never let me down. This is actually my frog and reel I used for a long time. This only has 10 pounds of drag. Is 10 pounds usually gonna be enough? Yeah, as long as this can hold up to frog. And to me, that's one of the toughest things you can do to really test a reel. The last thing I want is to make a long cast, have a fish take it, then I set that hook and I don't get the hook penetration because my drag slips. To me, that's a must. A reel has to have good drag. Now I've used this for cast and retrieve baits, so I have not got to test it with hard hook sets in the wood, you know, flipping a jig or flipping a Texas rig or frogging. So if any of you out there have tested that 
or those techniques on this reel, let me know in the comments below. You will help me out and you help all the fish and friends out there too. So I want to test that next year, but I got to wait for the snow to leave. So I'm not saying that's really a con to the reel. It's just something that I kind of wonder about. Um, whenever anything's kind of close to that 10 pound drag range, I like to test it out. So that's one thing I've not got to do here. So it could be a potential area for improvement. Now, the next spot that could be an area is if you're a newer angler. If you're a newer angler and picking this up, I find that just the straight centrifugal brakes can be a little bit trickier for anglers to learn. So like something like this on the speed spool, I think that the brakes on this are a little bit more forgiving. You can crank the magnetic brakes up and they're working all the time throughout the whole cast, no matter what. When you switch over to brakes that are just centrifugal, those brakes are gonna stop. So if you cast into wind, these brakes rely on the force of the spool spinning those brakes to work. If you cast into wind with this, not lure stalls, those brakes are doing nothing. So you have to make sure you have your spool tension set and you're using your greatest brake of all, the thumb. However, if you're somebody that's used bait casters and you're knowledgeable with your thumb, you're not going to have any troubles with this. It's a really good braking system that works. Most importantly, it works. So those are my thoughts on this reel. I'm happier than a dog with a box of bones with it. Works very well for me. It's small, it's light, it's comfortable to fish all day. I have been very, very happy with it. So let me know if you have any questions about it. I would be happy to answer those to the best of my ability based on how I've been using this little reel. And of course, if you want to see this compared to anything else, or if there are any other $99 reels you want to see reviewed, let me know. I've got a few more planned in the future. If you're new to the channel and you like the content, don't forget to subscribe down below. You will become a verified Ephesian friend. If you're a returning member, thanks. That's knuckles, camera knuckles to you like this, but with you. Anyway, I appreciate all of you fishing friends out there and uh, until next time.